Okay, uh, good afternoon. Uh, I want to fly over uh, some of our um, uh, products in the 15 minutes uh, that we have. So, those of you who don't know uh, DDN, DDN is a niche market player um, in the sense that it uh, focuses on high performance and high uh, capacity storage. So, in the top 500, you will find a lot of, if you would uh, sort it according, storage installation, you will find in the top 500 more than 60 out of the top 100 are DDN installations. So you won't find us in uh, small installs with uh, databases and things like that, uh, mainly behind large clusters. We are a US-based company, uh, have over 500 employees and are steadily growing and we, our, um, main business model is to work with partners, IBM, uh, HP, SGI, uh, those partners we mainly work with. So um, our, we are in InfiniBand storage, uh, we are providing InfiniBand storage since quite a long time. I think we were the first in, uh, the first one who provided uh, InfiniBand storage that was back in uh, in 2005. Uh, we have uh, steadily grown that and we have quite a, a large portfolio. Um, we are working with uh, um, many of the labs that are um, working on exascale uh, systems and uh, as part of that we are developing uh, solutions that aim for multiple terabyte per second sustained bandwidth. Uh, in 2005, we had our first product, which was called the S2A 8500. In 2005, we had uh, the fastest uh, IB developed, uh, IB uh, based uh, parallel file system, the Spider system, with over 200 gigabyte uh, per second. Uh, in 2010, we had the first IB uh, connected object uh, storage, which I will talk a little bit about uh, later. And um, in uh, 2010 also, we released the SFA uh, product, which started with the SFA 10K. And uh, the SFA 12K is about uh, to come uh, uh, in uh, the next couple of months and it has all the metrics uh, to uh, master a lot of bandwidth and IOPS uh, requirements uh, today's large uh, installs have. As far as the SFA 12K uh, 40 uh, is concerned, it's a block storage uh, device where we have uh, two controllers uh, with dual socket uh, processors, the 10K that uh, um, Hussein was talking about that is installed here at CSCS is as basically the same block diagram, but the processors are uh, Westmere processors. Here it got upgraded to the Sandy Bridge processors. And all of the uh, cores are doing rate uh, processing. In order to achieve the 40 gigabyte uh, per second, uh, or to bring the 40 gigabyte per second to the cluster, uh, we need a couple of I.O. channels, which will initially be uh, 16 FDR, InfiniBand, and when available later uh, this year, 32 16 gigabyte uh, fiber channel. Large cache and a very large back-end bandwidth of 960 gigabyte per second, uh, which allows to uh, do more than just bringing uh, the bandwidth uh, to the cluster, so doing also a lot of uh, background uh, operations without Im impacting uh, the performance. Then we have an, an SFA 12K, we call it the 20E. This is an embedded system. What we do here is that the cores of one socket, only the cores of one socket do the rate processing, and in, on the other socket, we run as virtual machines uh, an application. Uh, what we typically do in uh, cluster space is that we run a file system on it. So, and the initial two systems, uh, file systems that we ported to it is uh, 
uh, GPFS and, uh, and Luster. Um, <clears throat> because uh, half of the resources are being used for the application, um, all the bandwidth also reduces uh, to half, and we don't need that 960 gigabyte per second, so we can get along with half the number of, uh, uh, of cables. You see that this system has, uh, is also an IOPS monster in that it has 1.4 million IOPS uh, <coughs> to disk, uh, to SSDs, of course, and can have up to 1.7 million IOPS to cache. Um, if you see a conventional uh, luster uh, setup, then uh, you see here uh, some I.O. servers, OSS servers connected to some storage and a metadata server, and depending on how big it is, uh, maybe a, a separate or an integrated management server, which is connected uh, to the uh, luster cluster. So you have a lot of components. Uh, what you can do with the embedded uh, system that I... Uh, mentioned uh, in the previous slide is that you all merge this into one box. So you have an appliance uh, where uh, you don't need any uh, NSD servers or OSS servers. They are integrated and run as uh, as virtual machine on the system. So it reduces the comp complexity and uh, reduces the total cost of ownership. Um, as I said before, we have uh, initially ported uh, two file systems. Uh, uh, Exascalar is our name for a package luster uh, solution, and Gridscalar is our name for a packaged uh, um, GPFS uh, solution. Um, so with the SFA uh, model, we basically have three modes of operation, we can use all the cores uh, to do a block storage device and then get with the 12K um, up to 40 gigabyte. I set here XK because uh, it works the same for the current 10K as for the uh, soon to come uh, 12K. You can use it partially as block storage and partially as, uh, as file storage. Uh, and there are also customers which run their own virtual uh, machines uh, in there some uh, uh, st um, some applications uh, which better run very close to the storage rather than uh, loading uh, data uh, on the cluster. Uh, this summarizes uh, some of the uh, uh, of the features of the SFA 12K. First of all, it's a very fast machine with 40 gigabyte uh, per second. Um, the enclosures that we have been using so far are high density enclosures, uh, uh, 60 drives in a 4U uh, enclosure. Uh, with the SFA 12K, we will have, we will increase this by 40%. We will go up to 84 drives, 84 three and a half inch drives in 4U. So it's a very heavy box. Um, <clears throat> and uh, with the embedded model, uh, you are able to use the cores to run uh, virtual machines uh, on it, like the file systems that I uh, described before. Uh, which uh, reduces the complexity of an installation and uh, the total cost of ownership. Uh, this is a summary of the uh, of the the kind of systems uh, we have. Also, an entry level model, which we call an SFA 12K20. Um, <coughs> basically, the, our architecture uh, um, requires always uh, ten. Uh, enclosures. Uh, in this picture, this is, these are 10 physical enclosures. Uh, we have entry-level models which allow 10 logical enclosures which are then housed in five uh, physical uh, enclosures. So the smallest configuration so far was always uh, already pretty big because 300 drives times 3 terabyte is already about a petabyte uh, raw capacity, which uh, many institutions didn't need uh, to start with. So in order to um, <clears throat> uh, respond uh, to that, what we have done is that we have developed um, 
uh, model which allows uh, 10K mini, like we call it, uh, which allows to uh, configure uh, any number uh, of enclosures. Uh, uh, can be one enclosure, can be two enclosures, three enclosures, four enclosures, up to five enclosures. And then from five you have to go to 10, and from 10 you have to go to 20. So it's easier uh, to, uh, uh, to scale uh, <clears throat> from, a, from a lower entry level point. Uh, traditionally, uh, DDN um, is in this space, in life sciences and in media. Uh, and that is that the history behind this is that our S2A 9900 products, they were developed for large block uh, sequential. Uh, I/O and the requirements in this space are uh, are large block sequential uh, I/O. Uh, the switch to uh, SFA has enabled us uh, to much better uh, do large block sequential I/O and random I/O because of the IOPS capability of the Intel uh, processor architecture. So now. Uh, our products uh, fit very well in the cloud and the internet as well in uh, in digital uh, security, not in the last place because of the uh, high volumetric efficiency that we have with our products that you can have 600 and soon 840 drives in just one 19-inch rack. Um, <clears throat> this is an uh, environment, uh, as an example, in the financial industry, uh, uh, benchmark, a very known benchmark there is uh, what they call the KX uh, benchmark. Here you see an IBM uh, server connected with SAS to some uh, uh, conventional uh, storage. Uh, the problem that these guys have that they, is that they need fa uh, very fast access at very low latencies. So what we did is uh, <clears throat> we connect, we took that same IBM server and uh, connected it via uh, InfiniBand. And what we are seeing as a result of that is that the latency uh, drops uh, dramatically because of that. And that was ac actually the goal of that institute that they wanted to achieve. The bandwidth is higher, but uh, that is. Uh, <coughs> That is our traditional playing field where we are strong. Uh, WAS is, uh, stands for Web Object Storage. That's a product with, as it says, objects, not files, but objects. So there is no file system uh, related uh, uh, to it, just objects. Um, <clears throat> so the objective here is to um, uh, have a very efficient management, so it, it can it can be in a in a dispersed organization worldwide and many places, and managing it is very easy. Uh, also, uh, having it uh, very uh, efficient in terms of performance, as you know, accessing a, a file uh, takes uh, quite a lot of operations, also on the drive. Uh, with uh, was with the web object, there is one seek operation only to re to get access uh, to the data, so it's very fast. Uh, and of course, we use the same components that we use for the SFA uh, product, which means uh, we are very data center efficient because of the number of components that we can st install in in, uh, in one rack. So here you see the bricks that are being used. You basically use four U boxes uh, uh, or, or uh, three U16 drive boxes, but typically uh, these boxes are being used. And they have what we call a WAS controller on it. And you hang it just uh, via 10 gigabit Ethernet or 1 gigabit Ethernet or InfiniBand into a network. Uh, <clears throat> uh, and. Uh, you can access uh, the data uh, at any location in your in your cloud. Um, as I said before, it has a very uh, minimal uh, administration. It has not a concept of rating, so an object is there or it's not there, and it's not if it's not there, 
then the WASH mechanism automatically detects that the replication strategy that has been set in place is invalid and it automatically copies it in the background uh, to a new device. So the, uh, the recovery is much faster than having to recover a full three terabyte drive. You only have to recover the uh, objects on that drive that, uh, that are not accessible. Uh, anymore. Um, <clears throat> so the file, as I said, it's not a file system, it's an object system, and it has only three commands. It has only put, get, and delete. That's, a, that's the only three commands that, that are uh, possible. Um, and that is, uh, you can write your own um, application based on that e e on that API that's being provided and you saw before that I said uh, we have the first object based storage impl project implemented in 2010 that is when we had this in place but we discovered that it was pretty difficult for general availability uh, of users so what we did is uh, we um, <clears throat> um, developed two products, uh, what we call the cloud pl platform, which allows you uh, to, X, to have S3 compatibility, and you can access the data via your iPhone or via your, your iPad uh, uh, very easily wherever uh, you are. And uh, to access, uh, to have the connectivity with the HPC centers, uh, we have a NAS uh, gateway uh, as well on top of it. So what we are seeing is that uh, um, <clears throat> uh, there is a kind of merger from HPC space where uh, millions of threat, uh, threats access uh, the storage uh, and the storage requirements that you, we are seeing in cloud space where millions of users are, uh, are accessing uh, storage. So you will see our, um, in our roadmap developments over the coming years that the products that uh, uh, will come out uh, more and more will be suitable for, uh, for both environments. I think that's where I want to stop. Yeah, thank you. <laughs>